Good morning. Welcome to St. Andrews United Methodist Church. It's good to see you all here this morning. For those who do not know me, my name is Jack Oberholzer, and I will be your worship leader this morning. Before we start today, I don't have to remind you that we are having an unprecedented levels of COVID infections in our area. Uh, we've been fortunate that it has not significantly affected our congregation, but some members of our Council on Ministries have asked me to implore you that and you sitting in this congregation and those of you watching online today, for the health of our congregation, for those of us who are, have compromised health and families with newborns and so on, uh, to please take the following precautions while you're in our building and, and elsewhere. One, wear your mask covering your face, especially your nose and mouth at all times. Stay physically distant from non-family members, you know, at least six, six feet. Please don't bring food or drink into the building uh, as you would have to remove your mask in order to consume it, so we don't want anyone doing it at this time. We ask that you wash your hands regularly, and if you come into the building, sanitize your hands as you come in and also as you leave. And finally, if you have been exposed to someone who has tested for positive for COVID, or have you yourself have recently been tested, we ask that you not attend church for a couple weeks for the, uh, to prevent any exposure to any other people who might be susceptible in our congregation. And we thank you for your consideration in doing that. We know that we can come together and worship safely. We are entering one of the brightest times of the year. So let's make sure we can all share it together. Do we have any visitors today? I guess not, okay. Um, I do have a few announcements in the life of the church. <clears throat> First, um, the shoe boxes for Operation Christmas Child 
are due next Sunday, the 22nd of November. Please place your filled boxes under the Christmas tree in the narthex. And you can see the bulletin for more details. Next Sunday is the Harvest Home Sunday, so please bring your non-perishable food items and place them in the collection bin in the narthex. I remind you to please sign up on the Sign Up Genus or to call me each Sunday that you are coming to a service so that we know exactly how many people are coming and that way we can make adjustments as we need to. Um, I do have an announcement concerning the uh, cottage meetings that we're having. <clears throat> While PJ's somewhat unexpected retirement is coming uh, this June, uh, is the end of a new era at St. Andrews. It also means that we'll be welcoming a new pastor on the 1st of July. The Staff Parish Relations Committee, SPRC, met with our new district superintendent two weeks ago and was impressed with his warm attitude and commitment to his, to his responsibilities to the conference. He promised to help us find a replacement for Pastor John that will meet our needs. The challenge for us is to let him know what we think those needs are. We have scheduled two cottage meetings. We had one last yesterday, and we we're having another one November 21st. And due to the rise of infections, in our area, we decided to do this via Zoom. So um, they're being held to provide everyone in our congregation an opportunity to give their input to the Staff Parish Relations Committee so we can provide the district superintendent with an accurate assessment of our needs. So time is short because the pastoral appointments begin early next year. So um, the SPRC is very excited about this opportunity and the assistance promised by the new DS. We are looking forward to a good turnout at these meetings. We had a very good discussion yesterday at the, the One Cottage meeting online, and uh, we want to come up with the best recommendations possible. So if you have any information and you, can, and you can't get online, please see me or Betty Murphy or contact Pat Mar Martin, and we'll make sure you either can get the link to get into the Zoom meeting or get the feedback in the SPRC so we can have the, your input. Do we have any other uh, announcements in the life of the church? If not, um, let me make one final reminder that when the service is over, please let the back pews exit first and try to remain your distance as you leave. Thank you. Now, would you please stand for the call to worship? The time is coming and is now. Christ calls. Christ comes to us. Please remain standing for our hymn, Lord, listen to your children praying, and please do not sing. now pass the peace of Christ among you from a distance. <laughs> For our <clears throat> prayers, um, 
people to keep praying for are the Colodes. Uh, Jim is going to have a prep for a back operation for Lorraine Risser's niece, health issues. Her name is Christine. For a continued prayer, and by the way, uh, I want to thank you, Angela, and I want to thank you for all the wonderful cards and sentiments um, and the flowers that came from the church uh, at the uh, passing of her mother, Joyce. And we've put the memorial service on hold. Um, but uh, continued prayer for her father, Don, who we moved this past week. We moved to Neshaminy Manor, and um, life seems a bit better for him. He seems a bit happier. He's especially happy with what he's getting to eat. Um, and there's, there's kind of like more elbow room up there on the hill than there was down at Luther Woods. But, so continued prayer for him. Um, Prayer, continued prayers for Cindy Akers, um, has some transportation issues. Uh, Jen Oslender was requesting prayer for the children in the Centennial School District, really in, in all of our school districts with what they are facing. Um, the children, the young uh, adults and the uh, teachers and the staff, all of them, and then uh, Dana and Katie uh, <clears throat> continue to seek prayer for their grandson Dawson, who is struggling with a drug addiction. Um, so prayer would be for that he gets the right treatment, okay, and that he has a full recovery, and continued prayer for the rest of that family. Um, the Weller family is continuing to ask for prayer. Ned will be having a neurology appointment <clears throat> this week. And so pray for him and for Jill who supports him. Um, also Jill's mom, her dementia has progressed and um, they, are, they are in need of prayer as well. Pete and Ann Davis uh, ask for prayer as the doctors make a decision for Pete to come home maybe Saturday from his back surgery while in Germany. Um, so they need not only recovery uh, prayers but also traveling prayers. Dawn Park asks for prayers for a couple of her friends. One is Chris C. hospitalized and seriously ill with double pneumonia due to the COVID-19. And then also her friend Kathy Kay, who was on hospice and due to complications attributed to COVID. Um, we pray for all those who are struggling and fighting and dealing with the COVID-19. As the numbers continue to climb, uh, over 2,000 deaths yesterday. Uh, and for those who are fighting any sicknesses, cancers, trials, and tribulations. And prayer for our church, of course, our church family and each other. And we want to remember our nation. May we all um, come together in God's mercy and grace, pray for our leaders, uh, those outgoing and those uh, coming in, whoever they may be. Um, pray for also uh, Thai people, Thailand, uh, who will peacefully accept the results of an honest and fair election. Pray that they, uh, we can overcome the hatred and bigotry uh, that has been exhibited and, and we overcome the me first attitude that exists. Um, <clears throat> all those things that are on our hearts for sure, I didn't have to read them, you know many of them yourself personally. Yes? yes. Ken. Yes, Ken's home from the hospital and is he running around the... Uh... Okay, he's doing better. All right, yes. 
Yeah, that wasn't on there. Um, anybody else? Yes. Yes. And we had it for three and he's doing well. He's recovering at home. Okay. Wonderful. Wonderful. And you said you prayed for many cancers. Yes. Yes. Remember little May. Okay. All right. Let us come before the Lord. We'll begin with a moment of silence. Um making our own personal confessions. Where we look at our lives and we see perhaps there have been places, uh, literally, figuratively, um, spiritually, physically, in those places where we shouldn't have been, didn't need to be. It wasn't what God would want of us. We know it wasn't what Christ teaches us. Some of it was following someone else's lead. Some of it was following our own lead, the selfish part, the greedy part. Lord, have mercy on us once again. Lay them before the Lord. Father, forgive us for not having been the children all the time that we should be. The disciples, all the time that we should be. And we pray with the knowledge that when we confess our sins, when we admit them, when we repent, and try to repent, you hear us. You forgive us. And we don't have to live with those burdens anymore. We can begin anew. Right now, right from this moment. Father, we pray for all of these people in these different situations that we've lifted up. May your Holy Spirit just reach out and touch each of those people who we've named and embrace them. Embrace them with our prayers right now. That you continue in your amazing and wonderful ways to bring, in, bring about wholeness and healing, comfort and peace, to restore right relationships. We pray for these people. We pray for the nations and the leaders our own especially, and that uh, our own nation will be a blessing to other nations and still be strong in our own rights with our own blessings. And all of these prayers, Lord, we lift up to you 
And we ask that your spirit would continue to be with us throughout the rest of this service to bring us together, to unite us, We offer it with the words that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and let us, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Would you please stand for our affirmation of faith? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. This morning's responsive reading is taken from Psalm 90, verses 1 through 6. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. For the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn us back to the dust and say, Turn back, O oh mortal ones. For a thousand years in your sight are but as yesterday when it is past, or as a watch in the night. You sweep them away. They are like a dream, like grass, which is renewed in the morning. In the morning it flourishes and is renewed. In the evening it fades and withers. Please stand for the hymn, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. joyous and happy day when we can uh, open our mouths and let it fly. <laughs> My lips are bursting. In your travels, have you ever thought you've seen somebody you thought you recognized or thought you knew? Has anybody ever experienced that person looks familiar? 
Where do I know them from? Some people are very highly skilled at recognizing other people's faces. I was reading about a man who who had this ability to recognize the faces of people that he had met years before. He was in a restaurant one day somewhere here on the East Coast, and when the waiter came to the table, uh, the man looked at the waiter, looked at his face, and then asked him if he had ever lived and worked on the West Coast. And the waiter was a bit surprised and said, well, well, yes, I lived in California and I worked in a restaurant there 30 years ago. He didn't remember his name, but he, re he recalled his face. And there is, uh, there is a uh, title for that ability. It's call it, he was a, he's called a super recognizer. Okay, uh, and he has literally, literally used his abilities to help authorities identify criminals. Most of us don't fall into that category of being super recognizers. We're more like uh, typical recognizers. According to Neuroscience News Magazine, psychologists have discovered that our ability to recognize faces varies a great deal from person to person. It varies a great deal like uh, the ability to sing. There's a lot of us out there that think we can sing. There's a lot out there that say, please don't sing. Uh, besides the COVID <laughs> thing, don't sing, you know. Uh, while a very small portion of the population uh, can sing like a pop star or a rock star, the vast majority of us muddle and we shouldn't sing. When it comes to recognizing unfamiliar faces, most of us are really bad. But scripture tells us that even someone as familiar as Jesus can be hard to recognize at times. You remember Easter morning? Mary Magdalene? came to the tomb, grieving about the death of Jesus. And when she arrived, she saw that the stone had been moved from the tomb. And her immediate assumption was that grave robbers had been busy at work and that they had stolen Christ's body. So she ran to tell the disciples Peter and John. And when she got to them, she said, Someone has taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Peter and John jumped up and they ran to the tomb and they found the linen cloths that Jesus had been wrapped in, but no Jesus. So they returned to their homes. Mary, meanwhile, stayed by, weeping outside of the tomb, for she really wanted to give Jesus a decent burial. She turned around and she saw a man standing near her, but she did not know that it was Jesus. She was not a super recognizer, so she was unable to identify him. He asked her, woman, why are you weeping? Who are you looking for? She was probably thinking, who is this guy and why is he talking to me? She figured that he has to be the gardener or the tomb keeper. So she said, sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where you've laid him and I will take him away. And the man broke through the confusion by saying her name, Mary, Mary. And suddenly she recognized him and she called out, teacher, rabbi. And Jesus said to her, go to my brothers and tell them that I am ascending to my father and your father, to my God and your God. So Mary went and said to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And in a flash, Mary had become a super recognizer. What an amazing experience that was for her. I have seen the Lord. Something that none of the other followers of Jesus could claim. Her darkness turned to light. Her confusion turned to clarity. Her grief suddenly turned to joy. 
Mary's life was changed by being able to recognize, being able to see and recognize her Lord. So how can we become super recognizers? How can we identify Jesus in our world today? The Presbyterian Church USA started an initiative which is called Matthew 25, and it issues a challenge to the people of the Presbyterian denomination, a challenge to actively engage in the world around them so that their faith comes alive. And across their denomination, Presbyterians are being challenged to act boldly and compassionately to serve people who are hungry, who are poor, who are oppressed, who are imprisoned. And when they accept this challenge and they follow through, they are considered to be a Matthew 25 church. I read that and that sounded good to me. I believe that this challenge is for any and all denominations, any and all churches, any and all people who claim Jesus Christ as Lord. This is a good thing. Let us hear the word of the Lord for our message this morning. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. And then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. And then the righteous say to, will say to him, Lord, when? When did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty, and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? And the king will reply, truly, I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. The word of God from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 25, verses 31 to 46, for you, the people of God. This 25th chapter of the Gospel of Matthew tells the story of the final judgment when Jesus will look out over all the nations of the world and he will separate people into two groups, good sheep and bad goats. And then the people who were good will say to him, well, when did we do this? What did, when did we do any of this for you? We don't remember ever serving you in these ways. They would be typical recognizers, and they don't seem to have a recollection or a clue of seeing Jesus or serving him. And Jesus says to them, truly, I tell you, my friends, when you did it for one of the least of these people who are my family, parts of my family, you did it for me. That's the key to the Matthew 25 initiative, to serve the neediest members of the family to serve the neediest members of the family. When Presbyterians or United Methodists or Catholics and Lutherans or independent denominations or Baptists, etc., when they do this, serve the neediest members of the family, they are a Matthew 25 church. And when any of us do this, when we accept the challenge, then we are able to recognize Jesus. He's not a stranger sitting next to us. He is our Lord that we serve. 
How can we see Jesus today? He may not be clear at every moment, just like he was not clear to Mary at that moment right outside of the empty tomb, but he is present. He's present in the power of his resurrected life, resurrection life. He comes to us in the strangers that we meet, in the people who are hungry and who are sick. And when we serve vulnerable people, we become super recognizers of Christ in the world today. Here are a few practical things that we could do to serve and see Jesus today. Be welcoming. Welcome the strangers. You don't have to go far to find a stranger since there are people who are unfamiliar to some of us even in our own congregation especially when we have you know two services we have those people over there and these people over here and sometimes I hear people say I I don't know I hear I've heard that name but I can't picture who that person is you don't have to go far to find the strangers. But no, no matter how far you go, no matter when you do, always welcome them. You can just go to your church directory and find a person you don't know, but you can call them. You can tell them who you are and that you're a brother and sister from the church family. You could ask how they're doing. We do a lot of these things with the, with the, uh, the Shepherd Project. You won't be asking them to volunteer. You won't be asking them to make a contribution or to do anything at all. You'll just find out how they are doing and get to know them a little bit better. When you welcome a stranger, you are really welcoming Christ. You are greeting Christ. The next one is to feed those who hunger. A number of years ago, the Little Free Library movement was in full swing and people were building little containers for their neighborhoods, and they were loading them up with loner books. Today, many of those little libraries have fallen out of use, but they've been converted into little free pantries. People are filling them up with canned goods. They drive by and put their, their canned goods and other non-perishable foods in there for hungry neighbors to come by and to pick up. We have a small pantry in the back of Zion Hall. There are some faithful souls, not many, but there are some faithful souls that remember to bring something into them. And I think it's something that we all needed to, need to be reminded of to uh, do more with because we take those canned goods, uh, a, couple, a couple of people in the church faithfully take them down to the uh, food pantry at a sister Methodist church down the road uh, to be distributed. But we could, we could do more for that. We could stock, stock that pantry full. Kids love to stock pantries, to be able to bring a can of corn or you know, a box of uh, whatever, macaroni and cheese, and, and to know that they're helping the neighbors. They're helping people who are hungry. So we can do more as a church to make that happen. When you feed the hungry, you're really feeding Jesus. Caring for the sick is another one. In this year, crazy 2020, the year of the coronavirus pandemic, we've had opportunities to care for the sick and for caregivers more so than ever. We find ourselves becoming home nurses, uh, home caregivers. We find ourselves, you know, giving a lot of care to people in many different ways. But diseases will always be with us, as they have been before. And the people struggling with various illnesses appreciate the help that comes when we show our care by maybe doing their shopping while we're doing our shopping. We'll pick up stuff for them, maybe providing hot meals when we're making our meals or giving them rides to the doctor's office and appointments like that. At the very least we could do is a card or a phone call as a tangible way to show our concern. 
and not just to say we prayed for you in church or the pastor prayed for you in church and we were all listening, okay? It's for all of us to be tangible in doing that. Remember, when you care for the sick, who you're caring for? You're really caring for Jesus. And such of these efforts to be super recognizers of Jesus may seem innovative uh, and creative, but they're really nothing new. On the road to Emmaus, two disciples were walking with a stranger and they invited him to stay with them and to come and have dinner with them. And at dinner, when he was at the table with them, the scripture says he took bread, he blessed it, he broke it, and he gave it to them. And you can just picture eyes getting wider and wider as this happened. Vision getting clearer and clearer. They recognized him. They saw him. It was Jesus. When we serve little children, guests, the poor, we're really serving Jesus. When we welcome strangers and we feed the hungry and we care for the sick and the downtrodden, we are really helping Jesus. The good news for today is that vulnerable people give us a chance to identify Jesus and see him around us alive and well in the world. Learning to see is the key for you see what you are. The Talmud says, we do not see things as they are, we see things as we are. We do not see things as we are, we see things as we are. A man named Robert Barron puts it another way. Christianity is above everything else a way of seeing. Everything else in Christian life flows from and circles around the changing of our vision, the transformation of our vision. Christians see things differently, and that is why their prayer, their worship, their action, their whole way of being in the world has a distinctive accent, a distinctive aroma and flavor. At least it should be. That should always be part of our prayers. Let me be so different that I have a flavor, an accent, an aroma, unlike the world. Jesus can be recognized in the faces of the people who are in need. And, a big and, whenever we accept the challenge and we reach out to people around us who need the help, need the love, need the care, need our attention, Others will see Jesus in us. Amen. <clears throat> With the peace and love, the power of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, let us go forth a bit changed, a bit transformed. May our vision be a bit clearer. You know, maybe... Our eyes haven't opened up completely and our vision has become greatly clear, but it is a bit different from having been here with each other, from having come to God's house and worshipped with his children, our brothers and sisters, for having been here and prayed together and hummed together and heard God's word together. So that we go out there to see Jesus in the world around us and the world sees Jesus in us. Go in peace.